All right, in this video, this was actually uh, one of my most recent favorite tutorials to do. And what I want y'all to look at is this image here. This is like on screen one. I'm gonna slide to my second screen and tell me if you notice anything different. Let's go back to screen one. And then we're gonna to go to screen two. See that dragon back there? All right, or whatever that is. <laughs> All right, so let's go over to another image. Check this one out. This is screen number three on my custom live wallpaper. And focus on the gloves, the red eyes, and the glove down here at the bottom. Let me slide over one more screen. And if you look at that and concentrate on it, you'll notice that it's slightly changing colors. Um, the eyes are changing colors slightly different than the gloves are, and they're all at different speeds. And then here's one more. This is a picture taken earlier this year uh, when my family and I were having family portraits. And now look at this image. Focus on the sky. If you sit there and look at that, you can notice how the sky is changing from a blue to like a purplish pink uh, color. Well, um, that's what I want to talk about here is taking still images and bringing or bringing a little bit of life into those images. And, and this one right here is, is one that especially shows that. You can add subtle changes like we see with the gloves or the sky here. Um, or we can do more drastic changes like you saw with the dragon. Now, you can't do this with just KOWP, unfortunately. Um, what you're going to have to do is get a graphic piece of software. I use Affinity Designer. Uh, it's 50 bucks, and I think it works for Mac and PC. Um, you can use probably uh, some Adobe software, or I'm sure there's some free software. Maybe the recent tutorial I did on Inkscape, that might have this feature to it. I haven't looked, but let's go ahead and uh, have a look at how I'm setting this up. So inside of KOWP, what you see are actually what looks like to be three images. It's multiple images. And like what I've done for, uh, let's look at this one right here. This is one of the Monster Strike characters. I'm not familiar with this, but I did get the request from a user to add some animations or effects to images. So the full Monster Strike image, I'm going to click this button right here. And what that's going to allow me to do is whatever module I select, that's going to be the only thing we see. And this is the full image, okay? Now, if I back, go back to root, and suppose I tap on nose. The nose is its own little piece. Now that's, by me using this, I can hide all my other modules. And this is where that graphic piece of software is gonna come into play. Um, depending on what software you use, you can actually extract the nose or whatever you want very quickly. Um, and then what I've done with this image is, for this particular one, I've applied a hue to it. I've adjusted the hue and I've done some animations to it. The, the fade is just to make, uh, was for the purpose of me sliding back and forth between my screens so that you could see the still image versus the animated image. The complex animation is where you see all this fading and stuff coming in and out. And I just have it set to a loop with return, complex animation, and in this case I have four entries and I'm just alternating the transparencies totally random, totally random. Um, and, and all of these are totally random transparencies. That's all I'm really doing, and I'm adjusting the hue of each one. I'm sure you can apply some other type of color filter. I've messed around with that. There's so many ways, once you get that image cut out of the picture, that's when you can just really let KOWP do all the other work in terms of the animating, the fading. And right now, you know, that doesn't look too good, but if I cut that off and I have all these other things interacting with it, it does give a nice effect in my opinion. And I'm not a graphic pro by any means. The way I'm gonna show you how to do this in Affinity Designer, it might not be the correct tool to use, but it worked for me, you know? So uh, let me show you a few more of these before we dive into it. Let me go to, now every single one of these is their own little piece. That's why there's so many different color flashings coming on up here. Like eyelash number one, for example, here, if I just zoom in on that, it's just that little piece there. Again, I've adjusted the hue. The hue is probably a different number here. The animation, it's complex animation, is completely different. Five entries on this one, totally random numbers. But again, I'm just altering the transparencies. So, you know, um, if I back out to, let's go to the family portrait one. I have to slide over a few screens. So here's the family portrait, and this is the one where I think it's, uh, yeah, the sky's turning that purplish pink hue. You can see it. I can see it good. I hope you can see it good on your screen, but it's going from a blue to a purplish color. But let me show you how we can change that real quick. I got a family, and that's the full picture. 
full picture. And then what I also have is the family sky and I've used Affinity Designer. And now you can really see how that's what I've done is I've cut out everything and it's not as hard as you think, at least not with Affinity Designer. So I've cut out the whole sky. And if I come down here and adjust this hue a lot more, let's just make it something. Okay, that looks pretty cool actually. So now we get that, uh, oh, I like that. So, you know, that's some really nice effects you can get. So now let's jump into Affinity Designer and let me do a sample on one of these pictures to show you how we can add another animation to one of our pictures. So here we are inside of Affinity Designer and what I've done, you know, prior to this tutorial, when you saw all the dragon stuff glowing, uh, basically the dragon, I, I've cut out certain pieces like the top of the head, the eye, as you can see that little eye is changing right there or the lower part of the eye that is. There's the lower jaw. I just cut out random pieces and I've exported each one of these as individual PNGs. Here's a very important tip if you're doing this on any software to make this work nicely in KOWP. The original image is 1181 by 1181 pixels. You want to export all of these images using that same dimension. What that will do, if I just come in here and hide a bunch of these, Let's look at the nose, for example, or whatever. Okay, the top of the head. The top of the head is not really that big, 361 by 388 down here in the bottom right-hand corner. However, when I export it, I'm going to export it in all of its glory with all of this transparent stuff. The reason why you want to do that is because when it exports, it's going to keep this little uh, top of the head here in the same spot. It's going to have all this transparent stuff when you export as a PNG, and when you import it into KOWP, as long as you have the width of all of these images set to the same thing, the width in KOWP, it's going to line them all up like you see these things lining up here. It works great. Do not export each piece as its size down here or whatever software you're using. Use the original size of the image. That way everything is in the correct spot when you import it into KOWP. So with that said, I'm going to show you how to grab the sword in Affinity Designer. I use the Pixel Persona, and I'm going to grab this Selection Brush Tool. And we can either add or subtract stuff. And this little tool, depending on what your width is, I'm going to bump it up to, let's see what 60 does. And I have Add selected. If I come in here and click, look at what it just did. It kind of did like a little auto trace or something like that. I'm trying to grab the sword, and I don't want that red part, and I don't want the flame either. So let me click right here and see what happens. All right, that grabbed a little bit too much. And the reason why that probably happened is because my width is set too high. So I'm gonna Command Z on that. I'm gonna knock this width down a little bit. Let me click again. And notice what it is. You see those ants running around the screen? That's what it's going to grab, but I want to grab a little bit more. Let's suppose I did have too much. You can always use the subtraction. You got add and subtract. Subtract will remove stuff. And now by me subtracting, notice it removed it away because I didn't want that stuff out there. Going back to add, I want to get, you know, this part of the sword, this lower part, and this part down here as well. So I probably, I can do this with 35, my width. I click there, check it out, boom. It got exactly what I wanted. I'm going to lower my width and I'm going to come down here into this section. Let's see if it grabs it. Boom. Now we can zoom in. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but this looks pretty good to me. I see a lot of ants running around and it's creating the little pieces that I want. Let me click right there. That's pretty good. I'm gonna click a little bit more. Oh, that's too much. So remember, we can come in here and we can subtract stuff off. And by me subtracting that off, maybe you see those ants kind of running around here now. It doesn't have to be perfect by any means, but if I wanna get a little bit more fine tuning, I'm gonna lower my width. I got it set to add, and maybe I wanna get that little section right there. So now my ants are running to the corner. Well, that's exactly what I want. Let me zoom out just a hair and hopefully you can see, you know, we got this part traced. We got this little section here and these two little sections. Oh no, we don't have two little sections. Look at that. I'm actually getting the red there and I don't want that. So I'm gonna come in here and we'll bump the width up some and I'm gonna click on subtract and look at what it just did. It took away that red spot. So we had this little triangle this little four-sided shape, this weird looking shape here, and then the big part of the sword. Now, what's important next is we're going to refine this. We're gonna pull this out. We're gonna copy it from it. But what's important here is to make sure you have the full image selected. That way it knows where it's making the selection from. 
For example, if I had the eye selected, like you see over here, when it grabs this stuff, it's not going to grab it from what you think it's grabbing it from because the eye is just that little piece that's over here. So it's not gonna grab anything. So it's important to make sure I had the full image selected. I'm gonna go to refine and the red stuff is what it's not going to apply to, nor is it going to apply to these flames. And here's what I do. I just cut off the edges piece. I knock my border all the way down. I knock the ramp all the way down. I know some of these kind of duplicate themselves. All those are down to zero, or this ramp is at negative 100%. Knock that all the way down, and I want to output this to a new layer. And what this is going to do is it's going to create a new layer when I click apply. There's that new layer. So let me hide everything. Well, actually, all I have to hide is the full image because everything else is over here. But there's that sword. It might not be perfect, but it's okay because once we put this on our device, you're not going to be able to tell because we're going to be fading this thing in and out. And it's just going to give a little bit of life to that image or more life. So how do we export this? Well, it doesn't matter what you have selected here in Affinity Designer. Um, the export persona, this little button up here, will allow you to export each individual layer that you have. Now I've already exported all of these prior to making this tutorial, but this is the one called Pixel. Let me go back and to, let me go back and rename this real quick. Let me name it Sword. And then I'm gonna go back to my export persona. And now I had this uh, one piece here that I have not exported or I have not created a slice. So I had the sword selected. I'm gonna click create slice. And notice it gives me kind of like a default blue box here. That if I exported it right now, that image would be 184 by 453. If you did that and imported into KOWP, you would have to slide this thing left, right, up, down, maybe do some resizing to get it to match up. This is what I was talking about when you create this slice here. I want to make sure I set this to the same dimensions of the entire image. So notice this blue box got bigger. I'm going to drag it up. And what that's going to do with this sword is it's going to keep that sword right there in the same spot. And uh, if I go to slices and I got my sword selected, I don't want to export anything else. So I'm going to unselect all these. And the only thing I want to export is the sword because I've exported everything else prior to making this tutorial. So export slices, one slice. This is going to ask you where you want to save it. Let's go ahead and get this, save it, and put it onto our device. So I've exported it to my Google Drive. There's that sword. And what you'll notice with all these other images, the, these pieces that I was showing you earlier, they're kind of in their own little spot where they need to be because I've exported everything as the same dimensions. So here's the sword. I'm gonna go ahead and download that to my device and then we're gonna talk about how to set it up in KOWP. So if I look at any of these images that I've imported into KOWP already, the nose. Notice the nose has a width of 720. If I go to the eyelash, it has a width of 720. Every single thing in here, even the full image has a width of 720. So all these pieces, when I import it, I go ahead and make the width the same width of my screen. Now, I'm just gonna take the, it doesn't really matter, I'm gonna do the lower jaw because I like that blue color that lower jaw has. I want the sword to kind of have that blue color. So I'm gonna copy that lower jaw and I'm gonna paste it. Now that's just creating two lower jaws, but once we change our image, we don't have to do anything. If we're cool with the way the complex animations is set up, if we're cool with the hue, Remember how I showed you the hue back at the beginning? Um, all we gotta do is put that new image in there and we're good to go. So just renaming that to sword. I'm gonna go to my sword and I'm gonna go to pick image. And inside of here, there's that sword PNG. I think it's picking up two of them because there's one on my Google Drive and now one on my device. So I'm just gonna click on that. And since we've copied the lower jaw, uh, I didn't have to do any repositioning. All I had to do was change the image and that's all about exporting at the same dimensions. And notice over here now, our sword has a little hue color, uh, fade in, fade out animation to it. Now you could get really overboard and cut out a whole bunch of things and have a whole bunch of things animating. But if you're, um, you know, don't get too crazy with it because it probably would slow down your device a little bit. I haven't noticed anything with what I have going on, you know, with this one. And then over here we have the uh, glove animation going on. All this is on one custom live wallpaper. 
And then I had that one over here where earlier we did change it back at the beginning of the video where um, I had it changing to more of a yellow. The only thing about that, you can see the blue behind the tree. So I'd have to go in there and fine tune or maybe cut out a little bit more. Notice how you can see the blue outline in the trees, but it still doesn't look bad though. That's just a little bit more editing in Affinity Designer. And there you have it. That's how you can take still images and bring them to life in KOWP. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.